your experience? Was it was it smooth? Pardon the phrase, but just smooth sailing, <laughs> um, or or were there issues? It was smooth sailing to the point where I got on the submarine, and it just drops for two and a half hours. It takes two and a half hours to go two and a half miles down, and I fell asleep. I mean, if you want to hear a man not panicky, I had a beautiful nap on the submarine, and it's, it's a very shocking experience to wake up from a nap and think you're in bed, and no, you're in a tube two miles down under the ocean. But uh, I woke up when we touched bottom, and then we had to spend the next two and a half hours just sailing around the ocean floor looking for the Titanic. We knew it was there. We knew it was 500 yards away, but it was complete darkness, and we had no real guide. And so we just sailed for hours. And at any moment, you know, you only get three hours on the bottom of the ocean, and it's nothing to do with oxygen or supplies. It's, they just have to get you back to the surface while there's still daylight. So two and a half hours in, they're about to just wrap the whole mission and we wouldn't have seen the Titanic. And oh my. we really just stumbled on it. It, it popped into view and we li literally only had enough time for the Instagram experience. You know, it's not what we all went for. You know, we're not, these are not tourists who are doing this. These are explorers and people who are curious about the world. So I didn't get the full experience. I got the photos. Can you describe for, for people like, is it pitch dark? Like when you woke up and you were, they said, all right, we're on the bottom. Can you see anything or is it just pitch black? It, it is complete blackness. And you know, they keep the sub itself very dimly lit. It's really almost a spa experience. You're just laying on the floor. There's no furniture. And it's, it's, you're in this state, you're scared, but you're also very relaxed and you're excited. It's amazing you hold these three emotions at once. But uh, they tell you before you go on, they go, we've got food on board, we've got water on board, and we have a toilet. And you'll see, it's 10 hours, it's a 10 hour trip, and you won't use any of them. And uh, for 10 hours, I never thought about even taking a sip of water. And the toilet they have on board the sub has never been used. The, the one scary element of the whole voyage is the idea that to go back up, they, they push a lever that releases these lead weights and the weights fall off and then you bob to the surface like a cork. And that's how simple the whole trip is. You sink like a stone and then you bob up like a cork. And I just thought if something goes wrong with that lever, that switch and doesn't release the lead weights, I don't know what else you can do. You're just stuck. You obviously can't get out of the sub and do it manually. Was there ever a communication problem that you had in your experience between what was going on inside the sub, trying to contact people at the surface? At the yeah. surface? There is, I, I must say, I took four different dives, three in New York Harbor and then the one to the Titanic. And there were always communication issues. You would lose contact sporadically. And it's not nothing I blame the sub for. I blame deep water for it. It just seems to go with the territory. That communication would go in and out. And then there was also, you know, literal communication was a problem where when we were looking for the sub, when we were looking for the Titanic, we're getting all this advice from the surface going, you know, turn left at this rock. And we would go, there is no rock. They kept feeding us information that didn't correspond to where we were exactly. There is a simplicity to this, this submersible um, where they use a gaming uh, uh, console, console as, as you to know, steer to, it. Yeah, to direct it. Um, I, when you saw that, I'm just wondering what you felt. I mean, because for a lot of people, they're thinking, oh my God, this is a video game and we're going down to see the Titanic. Yeah, I, I, I know everyone's focused on the detail and it makes them think, oh, this was a real rinky-dink operation. But that is one of the prime 
assets, I think, of the whole sub is just how simple it was. That, I mean, they even let me steer and navigate around, uh, which was an amazing experience. But uh, it's that simple, you know, and you don't want it overly complicated. There was never a moment where I go, oh, there's a bunch of computers and machinery going here that I don't understand. The propulsion on it was literally just two propellers that looked like a fan you would put on your desktop on a hot day. Walk us through it. I mean, tell us how you decided to do it and what the experience was like. I did it because my wife made me. Uh, <laughs> my wife loves to travel and I love my wife. And if I wanna go on a vacation with her, I have to do it at the North Pole or North Korea or on the Titanic. And that's why we took this trip. We knew the company. We, someone had read about Ocean Gate and said, this sounds right up your alley. And so we took some of their initial test dives off of New York City, off of Hudson, off of, in Hudson Canyon, off of Staten Island. We went a thousand feet down with Stockton Rush and an earlier sub. And it was only when we came back, he said, you're, not, you're the first people to do that. And I go, wow, I, I did not expect to be uh, Neil Armstrong in the Hudson Canyon. <laughs> a couple of years later, he had developed his Titanic sub, which was much sturdier, much tougher, because we were going 13 times as deep. And we signed on for it, and uh, we were one of the earlier missions. And it's an amazing experience, obviously, but it, it, it surprises you in that you're scared, you know? The threat of death is constantly hanging over you. People have focused on the waiver you sign before you even get on the boat that's taking you to where the sub is gonna drop you. And the waiver is really a hundred ways to die. Stockton Rush had thought of every single way this trip could kill you. You, and it's not like you needed to be told that. Everyone knew, you know, this was not Disneyland. This was not a roller coaster. It was scary and it was not uh, a sure thing. Did they say anything or did the waiver say anything about the peril of Damage. hitting the floor and possibly getting entangled where it can't come back up? It is a very soft landing. I mean, it's, you know, you kick up a little sand it's, and it's soft down there. And there's really nothing on the bottom of the ocean to get stuck on. I mean, I guess a lot of people have said, do they go into the Titanic? Would they be trapped in the stateroom or on the stairway? No, you don't go in it. You just go around it and on top of it. And, uh, was it but was no, there, there, there's really nothing to get hooked on. I'm sure everything's in the waiver, but was there ever any discussion about what could happen as you go down in terms of entanglement? I'm sure that's in the waiver somewhere, but you know, beyond the Titanic, there was really nothing down there. It's two and a half miles down, and there's not seaweed, there's not coral, there's not fish, there's nothing there. What are your thoughts about what you're seeing right now? I mean, you know at least one of the people there. Um, I'm curious what, what you've been thinking about. You know, it's, it's unbelievable to say, but I know if they're down there, if they're alive, if they're even in a, a, a no-win situation, I'm sure there's just calm. There's utter calm to it, because that's how I felt during the whole mission. You're just, you're in this special kind of state in a special place. And again, they're so lucky that they're there with Stockton, who's as in control and as in focus as anyone I've ever met. When I made the trip, I took uh, a pad of paper and a, a pen, knowing the worst might happen. I might be stuck down there. I might die, you know, marooned with four days of oxygen. And I brought the pad and paper. I said, I'm going to write jokes. I'm going to write jokes. I'm going to go out writing jokes at the bottom of the ocean. And if they ever find them, people will go, wow, he, he died as he lived. In light of this what has happened here, 
would you or, or your wife go again on another or similar submersible trip? You know, if these guys get back safely, yes, I would do it again. If they don't, then no, I think I, I just won't do it because, you know, fool me once, shame on you. And, uh, you know, I think if, if I went after a disaster and did it again, I think nobody would really feel sorry for me. So I don't think I'll do that. Mike, thank you so much for coming on. It, just to hear your experience, to know that, you know, it was smooth. One, on the one hand, there were communication problems. On the other, it really kind of gives people a, a picture of What's what this is like and why people do it. So we're really grateful that you came on. Thank you. It's, uh, yes, I, I, I hope it doesn't hurt this industry, whatever happens. This is really bold exploration, and, you know, it's Star trek -y. They're going where no one has gone before, and I really respect them for it.